Welcome to PCR London Valves. My name is Sam Dawkins. I'm an interventional cardiologist from the UK. I'm delighted to be joined by Miriam Wilde from Heart Centre Freiburg and by Nicholas Schofer from uh, Heart and Vascular Centre Hamburg. We're talking today about the Pascal device. The Pascal is a transcatheter edge-to-edge repair device that comes in two iterations, the narrower ACE and the broader P10. Your Kauschleiter has published in the area of device selection, how to tailor the, the device to the patient's individual anatomy, and I wanted to talk through some of these features today. So perhaps starting with you, Nicholas, we've, we've seen, the, seen Jörg's um, views on, on device selection and how to tailor it to the patient's individual anatomy. What, uh, what, are your, what is your percep perspective on that? Well, I, I, definitely, I definitely think that uh, both Pascal devices enable us to treat multiple uh, mitral valve anatomies. And uh, so I completely agree with that. Um, in terms of, of the published uh, um, uh, data recommendation from Jörg Halsleiter, I would maybe not agree um, with, a, with a smaller valve area, um, uh, which for me is more a, um, a, a P10 go-to situation because I like to use the spacer and uh, cases where we have maybe uh, issues with the borderline gradient, but otherwise I definitely think we have uh, um, devices to treat multiple anatomies. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think what I've, what I've found is that the P10, although it's a broader device, you, and you would think would generate more of a gradient, it actually doesn't. You have a bigger orifice area with that device. I, in my center, we have quite a simple rule. Um, if there's too much tissue, we generally use an ACE, so that's most degenerative pathology. And if there's too little tissue, we generally turn towards the P10 um, because having a spacer means you put the leaflets under less tension. Yeah. And I think probably get a more predictable result. So that's our algorithm. So it's interesting to hear how we're all broadly the same, but we have a few differences in our practice. Yes. Um, good. So that's a, a little bit of discussion on the Pascal device in the mitral position. Mm -hmm. uh, a really important aspect is treating tricuspid regurgitation, which is uh, far undertreated, I think we would, we would all agree. Um, one, of the, one of the aspects of the Pascal device that works very well is it's the same device in the tricuspid position. The device isn't keyed, so you can set the steering to do whatever you need it to do, which lends itself very well in the tricuspid position. Turning to you, Miriam, what, do you, what, what features of the Pascal device do you find useful for treating tricuspid regurgitation? So what is very important when comparing the mitral side to the tricuspid side is that we find a much higher degree of complexity of anatomies, a much higher range of um, heterogeneous anatomical variations. For example, in the PACE registry, which is a real-world registry now including almost 1,000 patients, we see that not even half of the patients treated by a tear procedure show the typical tri-leaflet morphology. But most of the patients show a much higher degree of complexity. And so um, it is important to have a device which allows you um, a high maneuverability, um, but combined with the stability, which we now gain with the iteration of the Pascal Precision, I think, so the uh, system can really facilitate tricuspid tear procedures today. Another very important aspect, I think, is that in tricuspid disease, we find much larger coaptation gaps. So often it is not possible to do a simultaneous grasp of the leaflets, but we have to use the independent grasping. And with the Pascal device, we can really open up to 180 degrees, capture one leaflet, and then swing over to the other leaflet with the so-called Tarzan maneuver and grasp the other leaflet. And I think with this device, we can do it with quite a lot of um, confidence to do not do too much harm to the tissues because we only have this one row of retention elements, so we don't have too much trauma on the leaflet structure, um, especially in tricuspid when dealing with this thin leaflet uh, morphology. So predictability is important, versatility is important, which you, you very nicely covered there. An issue that's probably the most important is safety. Um, what we see and what we have concerns about in the commissural position in the mitral side and anywhere in the tricuspid valve is that there are a lot of cords. And how, how does the Pascal device lend itself to avoiding entanglement and to, and to release yourself if you do get entangled? Yeah, so another nice feature of the device is the possibility to fully elongate it. So if you find yourself in a um, situation during the procedure where you where you're kind of stuck and you're maybe entangled to, um, in the corda or a little bit um, attached to a leaflet and you want to free yourself, this maneuver can really help you um, without taking any risk 
to um, get out of the situation and just restart again. In the early days of edge-to-edge -edge repair, we focused very much on grasping anything. You know, we were very happy to grasp anything and that was what we would take. Now we have independent grasping, we have the opportunities for optimization, we understand the imaging a lot better, so we spend a lot more time fine-tuning the results. So we can change the position on the leaflets, we can change the orientation, we can change how much of each leaflet we have. What do you feel, Nicholas, about the issue of making multiple grasps? Is there a problem with that? Are we damaging the leaflets, do you think? What do you feel from your clinical practice? For my clinical practice, I think uh, multiple grasping is really uh, possible with that device and we, we very liberally use multiple grasping attempts to achieve a maximum leaflet insertion, to optimize device orientation. And from my experience, it actually does not harm, uh, but instead makes the procedure safer and uh, also reduces the risk for, for single uh, leaflet device attachment, for instance, um, to be really sure you have a maximum leaflet. Um, so that's my, my clinical experience. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously very difficult to, to prove that clinically. We all have a feeling, but what about uh, bench data? What about lab data? There is actually bench data out there uh, supporting uh, exactly that approach that multiple leaflet grasping and also multiple closing of the device does not significantly harm uh, the leaflets and, and uh, does not result in leaflet significant clinically uh, relevant um, uh, leaflet damage. So there is data out there supporting what we do in practice. Great, well thank you both very much for helping give us an overview of the Pascal device for treatment of both mitral and tricuspid regurgitation. The Pascal ACE and the Pascal P10 gives us options for handling a really broad range of anatomy safely and effectively. Thank you very much. Thank you.